Here is your latest African news. South Africa Alleged arsonist appears in court in South Africa. The alleged arsonist behind the fire that ravaged South Africa's parliament complex last week has appeared briefly in court. The Cape Town Magistrate Court charged the suspect, a 49-year-old, for arson. The hearing is now adjourned to January 11. The fire started at the early hours of Sunday morning and was brought under control on Monday morning. Strong winds, however, reignited the flames, leaving firefighters battling the blaze late into the night. The flames destroyed the chambers where MPs normally sit. The fire started in the old part of the parliament complex before spreading to the modern part. Ethiopia U.S. Special Envoy to visit Ethiopia this week the U.S. Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa, Jeffrey Feltman, will travel to Ethiopia this week to hold talks with the authorities about the damaged U.S.-Ethiopia relations. The U.S. State Department say that Mr. Feltman was to engage with senior officials regarding the prospects for a broader peace. The alleged U.S.-supported TPLF terrorists have in recent times withdrawn to their stronghold Tigray region in the north of Ethiopia. The Ethiopian government said its troops would not pursue them into the region. The Special Envoy's visit comes after the U.S. removed trade privileges for Ethiopia over rights abuse claims. Chad Isin Abre's victims appealed to Makisal over the compensation process. As Senegal's head of state prepares to take over the AU chairmanship in February, a group of NGOs held a press conference early in the week to ask him to make victim compensation a priority. Following the trial of former Chadian President Isin Abri by the Extraordinary African Chambers in Dakar, some 82 million CFA francs were to be paid to some 7,400 identified victims via African Union Trust Fund, but nothing has been paid to the victims so far. The president of the Senegalese League for Human Rights blamed the delay in the compensation process to a lack of political will by the African Union. Former Chadian President Issan Habre died at 79 in Senegal, where he was sentenced to life imprisonment in 2016 for crimes against humanity after an unprecedented trial. It is also the first time a former African head of state was tried in Africa. Niger Niger suspends order to expel high-profile Rwandans. Niger has temporarily suspended an order to expel eight high-profile Rwandans relocated there from Tanzania, allowing them to remain in the country for 30 days, pending a resolution. There were political and military officials during the 1994 Rwandan genocide and had either been acquitted or released after serving their prison terms. The move came hours after the seven-day deadline they had been given to leave Niger expired. They relocated to Niger after the government there cut a deal with the United Nations in November to grant them permanent resident status, with Rwanda later saying it had been kept in the dark. It urged Niger to ensure the individuals do not become a threat to the security of the Great Lakes region. Then in December, Niger decided to expel them, citing diplomatic reasons, prompting a move from an international residential mechanism for criminal tribunals judge to temporarily halt this action. Namibia Namibia takes next step in major green hydrogen project. Namibia President Haidje Jingob has said that the nation will secure $6.3 million in concession fees from Hyphen, the preferred bidder to develop the country's first large-scale vertical integrated green hydrogen project in the Saukeb National Park. According to Dr. Emmanuel Taibi, head of the power sector transformation strategies, green hydrogen is defined as hydrogen produced by splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen using renewable electricity. Kenya Kenya's KFC in hot oil over non-Kenyan potatoes. Furious Kenyans are calling for a boycott of the fast food giant KFC after it announced earlier this week it had run out of potatoes. While potatoes are the second largest crop in Kenya, KFC uses imports to make its chips, hence the shortage. Washira Kagwongo, CEO of the National Potato Council in Kenya, which works with local farmers, stated it was not sustainable for KFC to continue sourcing its potatoes from abroad. He stated that Kenyans are offering a market for their food and expect that they should also offer a market for Kenyan farmers. However, KFC's East Africa boss Jack the Unison told local media that approval procedures could not be sidestepped to bring in local farmers on global quality standards. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share, and like this video. It's the best way of supporting us. Also, don't forget to catch the return of our show Africa in the News on our channel.
You can directly support this new series by becoming our YouTube member or becoming a Patreon and donating. And remember, Africa is watching.